What up, you lab rats? This is episode number 63. Today we're talking about are you wearing your pain on your sleeve? Stay tuned. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Lab Rat Dailies, the in-between show of the main show. With me and Kevin getting lab podcast on Wednesday, talking about building the business together. Every day is a theme here on the Lab Rat Dailies. Today's theme, throwback Thursday. Throw it up. Throw up the image. Uh, probably what you're seeing is something from Japan. I chose Japan because I always kind of think fondly back and throwing it back to the days where I tried to learn Japanese for a minute <laughs> and uh, suffice to say that I just stuck with all the anime that I watched and said I'll just I'll just be satisfied with that anyway it's kind of a rough week for me guys the uh, daylight savings time really kicked my butt I feel out of sorts I feel like I'm not bringing the same energy the sun is not shining we're getting weird clouds and weird weather uh, and I'm like a plant and I need sunshine, sunshine to like be at my fullest. I don't know if you guys ever feel that way, but the sun really gives me energy. It's like Superman. Um, anyway, <laughs> today we're going to talk about wearing your pain on your sleeve. And this is something that I, I kind of had a hard time kind of creating a headline for. It's like there is this issue of kind of always talking about your problems and bringing up your weaknesses and acting like a victim and, and complaining and whining and being a little whiny bitch, okay? So there's something uh, around that that I'm kind of seeing right now that's popping up. And, and this kind of popped up because I have experienced being a little whiny bitch. And uh, I see companies, other companies doing it too. And a prime example of that is the coming of this Apple Watch that's coming, right? All the rage. And of course, you know, Kevin and I are big Apple fans. And so we've been kind of debating back and forth whether we need an Apple Watch or we want an Apple Watch and, and the kind of things that are kind of popping up around that. But the very... Uh, the very the, the most promising uh, prominent kind of bitchy thing that I've, I'm hearing about the Apple Watch are all the other companies uh, I don't know like Samsung something like that or, or Microsoft or whatever the other the other guys that are complaining that we did it first we did it first and the same type of conversation came up when the iPhone 6 Plus came out, right? Everybody was like, it's massive, it's huge, that's ridiculous. I think it's fantastic and fabulous because I'm getting blinder as I'm getting older. So the big screen that's as big as my face, yes, is awesome. And I don't give a crap if, you know, uh, what, what are the other companies like Galaxy or Samsung? I don't even know what the other companies are, but the other companies saying, well, we did it first. OK, and like, well, that's that's a very um, valid point to bring up. And that's a very uh, pioneering thing about your company that you did it first and that your phones were bigger or you did the watch first. And and you know what? In th at the end of the day and, and to win the game, it isn't who did it first. OK, it's <laughs> it's who did it best. All right. <laughs> so you can just kind of. You be quiet now because it you just end up sounding these companies just end up sounding like whiny little bitches. So I know that's kind of a harsh statement, and uh, I think it just needs to be said because it reminds me of myself when I was a whiny little bitch complaining. Well, I did it first. I I did video podcasting first, and that's a really weak position to put yourself in to put myself in and when I think about that it makes me a little makes me a little not angry but like it exposes my weaknesses of, of how I used to think about my position as an entrepreneur or whatever it doesn't matter who did it first okay it matters who did it better best right and that will keep evolving that will keep changing and that's kind of the beauty of life because there's always kind of someone to make it better and instead of thinking, instead of coming from a perspective of like, you know, they stole my thunder or they're stealing away my business, why not just go, okay, dude, you one up me this time. Let me learn from that and see where I can fill in the gaps and one up you this time. Like co competition within business is what creates innovation, what pushes creativity. Okay. So we don't need this like negative trife that you hear in the background where like um 
what what was it during during some kind of uh uh apple event you know we had some other company come in on twitter and try to try to be like we did it first though okay remember remember though that we did it first okay nobody f is gonna freaking remember you just look you just come off looking really needy when you do that kind of thing okay like remember I, I did it first you look really needy and it and companies big companies should not be doing that right <laughs> or at least their PR companies should be telling them uh okay you know uh, so what? Apple's coming up with their sleek, you know, spin on it, whatever, whatever their angle is, their Apple angle is on it. What can we do to make it better? Is there a reason why we see that as a threat and how can we address that? So what if we're the cheaper alternative? Okay, let's just ride that wave. Let's ride the wave of being the cheaper alternative instead of always kind of you know, hanging on cloyingly <laughs> to the customer saying, but remember we did it first. It's a very weak position to put yourself in. So, uh, you know, before I, this kind of turned into a rant, but <laughs> sorry, um, I want to talk about, you know, kind of three ways for you guys to kind of realign your perspective. I just talked about that being a sort of, um, weak position to put yourself in when you're when you kind of wear your pain on your sleeve that way uh but another way that you can kind of realign your your marketing when somebody else kind of swoops in and and steals your thunder so to speak take that as a challenge and not as a threat um of course it'll always feel like a threat in the beginning but if you're smart and if you're in this for the long haul uh which is business is a long haul it's like a lifestyle and you are, you know, somebody like me who's like a freelancer or you create content online, don't see that as a threat. See where you uh, can now improve upon your own product and your content, right? That's just, you're, 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 both, com you're, you're both contributing to the betterment of better content, better products in the world and solving problems better, fancier, good looking -er, you know what I mean? So if you, t if you take a look at, you know, why Apple is so so successful as it is, it's because they have a sort of brand awareness and a sort of brand following. And if you are threatened by that, you, then you need to develop your own, right? So <laughs> if you are the cheaper alternative, then ride that wave. You know, I'm just kind of speaking to these other companies, not like they'll listen, but it's just a good lesson for myself and for others who, you know, care to listen to the content that, you know, people who come in and innovate and make your shit better and they do your thing better, whatever you first started, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It may feel like a threat at first, but. Uh, it's, they're asking you, challenging you to step up your game as, you know, problem solvers. That's really it. If you can think of it like that, then there's no, there's no need to, to be needy and cloy and, uh, cloying and, uh, and be threatened by that. And, and, you know, kind of running your, your business and your brand from a place of fear. Uh, it's much more attractive when you can go, all right, Apple or all right, whatever, you did me up that time. Let me see what I can do um, on this side of the fence. And then you you compete and you make things better, all right? So I don't want to keep <laughs> saying the same thing over again. So those are some thoughts that are kind of running into my head here on Throwback Thursday. Um, I used to wear my pain on my sleeve for a long time, saying I did it first, or um, even not within that area, but but like talking about my victim and pain story all the time, like woe is me. And for the most part, you need to learn to let that stuff go. <laughs> Whatever you have in your past that you think defines you, let that be a part of you and your history and your brand and where you come from. Everybody has an origin story. But what are you doing right now in the weeds, in the lab to to be a better person and to be a better entrepreneur? Um I try to do that and to be self-aware about that. And that's really all you can do because you can't self-monitor 100% all the time, right? So, you know, we do our best. Uh, but the point is that if you're even listening to this content, uh, that right there is is big ups to you, okay? So um, pretty short and simple today, guys. I'm trying to get back into the groove of things. Let me know. <laughs> 
in the comments if daylight savings time kicked your ass as hard as it did mine. It's so weird. It shouldn't have. It's not like I have anywhere to go, but uh, I just feel like it's just putting me out of sorts. Um, and uh, tomorrow on Good Shit Friday, another great episode with my buddy, uh, Dre Bailey. We're talking about entrepreneur arrogance. So check that out tomorrow. And uh, good things, guys. Trying to trying to keep hustling over here. And uh, thank you again, always, for hanging out with me on the Lab Rad Dailies. And we'll see you next time. Once again, my name is Megan, reminding you to get in the lab. We'll see you. Cut, cut, cut. Cut, 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 cut.